Tēnā tātou katoa, nau mai hoki mai ki tēnei te whārangi purangi o te Pāti Māori, a rā hoki um, he kōrero hau. Uh, welcome back to another night of Māori Conversations. And tonight, uh, we're fortunate enough to have our co-leaders both joining us. Ngā mihi kia koe, Debbie. How are you? Kia ora, I'm great. How are you, kāpua, JT? Uh, for I'm a great weekend. Good. Yep, and we've got John, John and Tamaki Makoto. How are you? Yeah, keep the point. Oh, well, hey, um, I just, I just want to I'll just say, um, oh, kito a tārei ko whetu rangi tia tēne mihi atu a uh, ta pāpua rangatira uh, a rose. Hey, moi mai, moi mai, a moi ngarua. Uh, kai wariwari ki a mātou, uh, te aroha, uh, ki a kotau, uh, Rosie. Um, kai wariwari ki a mātou tō mahi rangatira, kei tāwhitia ki a mātou uh, te kai tui tui nunui uh, te Pāti Māori. Uh, kei te mihi uh, ki a koe, uh, Rosie, mō tō whānau hoki. Kia ora, aye. Um, yeah, lovely mahi. So we've had a big weekend, which is probably mm -hmm. why we're all feeling a little bit tired. Um, we've been fortunate enough to actually come together uh, as a group of candidates this weekend. Um, and as John um, acknowledged, one of our whanau, one of our team um, experienced the loss uh, during this this weekend. So ngā mihi kia koe rose, a rāhoki me tō whanau. So... Mm -hmm. The Wananga, what a fantastic and fabulous get together it was to get on the Kaupapa, um and look at moving forward. How did you feel coming together for the first time as a team? Uh, kanohi kite kanohi, John. Oh, look, I've um, been involved in a number of um, it's a policy groups and a, a number of um, times coming together, uh, but with another party. And um, what was uh, refreshing. Um, on uh, Friday and Saturday, uh, and, and, and Sunday, uh, was um, for the first time uh, ever. There was um, see, Māori's are very, very expansive thinkers, and when you bring um, some extraordinary brains together, as we did uh, over that whole uh, three days, um, you can you can normally um, have some very uh, exciting conversations, but they're very widespread. What what was amazing was how um, they centred. They just it was just the kotahi um, Yeah, just it was just incredible in terms of uh, the the variation of thinkers there, the wide academic as well as um, world, world lived experience folk that were in the room as well, and they all landed, um, and we all landed when we came back uh, after our breakouts and the like on the same on the same position. That you don't often look, and I got to tell you, you, normally you have to try and workshop those things for quite some time. It's just um, remarkable, and I think you know when we start to uh, announce what we landed on uh, coming into the election, our people will be uh, uh, proud of us, um, proud of them for, for for us advancing their interests in such a um, liberated way. And I, uh, so oh, it was just remarkable uh, conference, congregation, communion. Uh, of coming togetherness. So I, I'm still, um, you know, awarangi myself, had my five babies there, all my mokopunas in, in and out. And so, you know, because we were, we were all just started to extend bubbles. Uh, and, and it was just incredible um, coming together. And I, I've never witnessed it previously. Mm. Um, it was a lovely get together, especially coming out of lockdown where we have not been able to connect um, personally. Um, as a team, Debbie, how did you feel about the weekend? Oh, uh, yeah, we had a five-hour trip home, and it just went so fast because we just were debriefing. And you know, JT used a really great word, liberated. Yeah, you know, it's it's you know to be really honest, it's been tough, um, tough coming out first, and tough thinking, have we got the tow talk or do we still believe? Is there is there enough good faith in us to um, reinvigorate the party? And critical to that was getting the right team, the right dynamics. And, you know, there are certain things in life that happen and all the tohu, um, everything comes together and you just not only know it, but you feel it. And the feeling that uh, we achieved in such an intense time to have achieve that high degree of trust in such a, a short amount of time and not forgetting that you know we were made 
co-leaders on online through Zoom. We were meeting new candidates through Zoom. Their whānau through Zoom, grieving mm. with them through Zoom. So we have had this intense whanaungatanga digitally. So it was, it was, you know, I'll be really honest, probably of all the times I've been the most anxious and nervous was pre this. And, it, you know, seriously, Fano, it could not have gone better. You could not have a better group, a better Fano of representatives to champion our multiple causes because we're just so dynamic as Māori. And it was, you know, it was just like the dream team. And I sincerely mean that with the dream Fano. You know, I mean, we had the more cause and, you know, pity, you know, the, the total call that each candidate comes with was just, just phenomenal. And you know, so here we are, this really sort of, you know, poor hara party, you know, we, 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 we don't have a lot as far as um, the big parties with big money, but what we have is just absolute um, strength and kaupapa people. And that's where we all felt rungoa. I, I, I've always felt privileged, um, you know, representing our people. But you really, truly felt the strength. There's not a single one that I wouldn't want to get in, and there's not a single one of their whānau I wouldn't want to have attached to the party. So it was, it was just pure magic. Really was kupuna mahi, eh? Really mm. felt like kupuna mahi bringing us together. You're absolutely right. The team when we brought the candidates together, what a phenomenal dynamic team. And mm. as diverse as you all are, mm. you know, we actually connected on so many different kaupapa. We actually landed on similar places. So I'm going to ask you, John, can you tell our whānau out there a little bit about the kinds of things we talked about over this weekend? Look, um, they, they all know that. Um, look, when you, when you come from um, the background of being in a mainstream party, um, you you are constrained, okay? Because uh, you have uh, you've got to dance on eggshells because uh, you've got um, the so-called ownership of the green movement, and it's not in Māori hands. It's in a Parker group saying that they they have it right. Uh, same with the women's movement um, in the in another party. Uh, the same uh, in terms of um, unionised labour. Uh, that's not a Māori movement. Each one of those movements I've indicated. Uh, are headed by non Māori and, and other parties. Um, what, what what is liberating is um, so I, 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 I'm, I can, I'm just not constrained anymore. <laughs> and my daughter calls it colonised. Um, <laughs> I'm not colonised. Wow. Well, I think what you were saying here, we actually challenged yeah. ourselves, well, your daughter challenged us to think about how colonised we each are. Mm -hmm. um, and actually confront that and, and yeah. acknowledge that as we were working through the stuff. I just think it was such a Māori hui where it was safe to have conversations like mm -hmm. that. Yeah. 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 So your daughters oh. have to say. Yeah. Oh, but hey, this that was the beauty of Māori hui, you see. Um, our filters, uh, we don't have filters. <laughs> you know, <laughs> um, uh, Parkers call it uh, group therapy, but we've been practicing it for over a thousand years. It's called hui huinga. So, um, uh, and we sort of, we sort of, left. we just got there, you know. I, I, I um, it's regretful that we are not in a position because, you know, we've got a, a quite a few weeks to go, uh, but they're coming quickly. Uh, got to be another 16 weeks to go before election day uh, on the 19th of September. And so, um, with, with a uh, party that um, has been blocked out uh, of any oxygen solely because of COVID, and COVID has delivered, um, you know, uh, one party in the prime and a, with a prime minister totality of um, everything, and so uh, a party like ours, um, when we do hit the road uh, and, and when our soldiers do hit the street, uh, I think our people, as I keep saying, they will be proud of themselves and of us uh, for what we've got to, what we have come up with. But and it took this three day session or two day session. Um, and in Charawa, I just wanted to meet you, Charawa Tangata, Charawa Waka, you know, for uh, the, the wonderful way Wairiki came uh, to the party and um, just hosting us. You know, so so I, I, the, the takeout and the takeaway is um, <clears throat> we, we're going to, our people, we're going to run, run a remarkable campaign. And I, I'm just so, uh, I just can't wait to get out of the starters gate. Um, uh, and, and, you know, our people will 
um, have some faith and hope and belief and light at the end of the tunnel. And it will be uncompromising, uh, relentless and liberated stuff. You know. Yeah. Um, well, going back to that point you made early on around the difference between in a, between being in a Māori party and being in a mainstream party, I was asked about that this week. I said, you know, I just get to be me. It's actually just about being me and all of us relaxing as Māori mm. and not having to worry about justifying basic things. Oh. And that is something we didn't have to do at this wānanga. Debbie, can you tell us, what can we expect from this new Māori party team? Well, I think the first thing we can expect is that we are completely values-based. And so uh, one of the really interesting stories, which I keep going back to with Rawari, is where now people saw the arrival of the Pākehā waka and looking at thinking, why are their sails upside down and why are they rowing backwards? And it was just such a great analogy of why, and it doesn't matter how well intending the mainstream government and parties are, they will always have to rule and make policies based on um, models that simply don't work for us. So I think the first thing you can expect is that we will be provocative in you know to wh whoever is in government in saying that model works for you, but Cole, <coughs> it doesn't work for us. And not only will we be provocative, we'll be solutions focused because I think that's what's really important is that everyone sort of thinks, oh well, we can't do this because you know, it, it's either this way or that way, actually will be very relationships focused, very relationship mm -hmm. focused as far as uh, not only what we intend to do, but most importantly, putting whānau first. So what mm -hmm. you can expect, I think, is is um, all the strength of the candidates and their experiences coming together in this amazing um, puna um, that will use that to be able to guide and use our roles in those places to challenge bureaucrats, to guide governments, to land directly uh, into the hands where our support is best needed, into the hands that will bring you know, results, kai on the table, mahi, 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 and, and not any mahi, mahi that can be about, you know, our whānau being, living their life that they want, the best life that they want, uh, in, a, in a taha Māori uh, way. So I think, there was a lot that we we will be about, but most uniquely is us as tangata whenua mm. and unashamedly asserting that, um, but in a relationships way. And I think that's always been the, the you know, it's either or and we're going to bowl this down. We're actually critical to us being uh, at the weekend was this summer <coughs> of tangatahi around us. So one of the really unique things, and it was really awesome um, when Tūtūrō arrived and sort of noticed it as well, and you know the the succession of the party is already has already arrived. So we, you know, JT and I are already on notice. The next, you know, the next co-leaders, the next candidates, the next, and I think that's what also you can expect is that we are we are not here. We've had our experiences. We've you know we've we've had some great learning curves and and we're not here for a little while we're here for a long while and that's mm. the other thing was the intergenerational presence that's which right. made us feel an intergenerational sense of relationships and leadership required in in government in kawanatanga mm, kia ora. i want to touch briefly on that that kaupapa you mentioned earlier relationships so a big dark cloud hanging over us for the last few years has been people's um, uh, misconception, I guess, I'm going to call it a misconception, around the Māori Party's relationship with National. Mm. Now, it is one of the kaupapa we discussed at this wānanga. Can you tell us, where did we land? How, how Tell our whānau out there, what is the Māori Party about? What are we looking at in terms of relationships moving forward? Well, let's. Uh, you, you're judged on your history somewhat. Okay, so let's look, let's look at that first. At no time in the history of the Māori Party did it hold the balance of power. At no time. So what it had to do <clears throat> was do its best to pitch up with what it had and work with whoever held power, right? You can either walk away from power or you can try and work with it. Uh, if you work with it, uh, you've got to be careful that you're not subsumed by it and seem to be enslaved by it. I don't think uh, Tari, Pete, 
uh, Tururu Huni when he was in the team. I, I, I don't think they ever did that. Okay, not once. So <clears throat> that's that's point one. That's the context of their their relationship. Uh, Labour Party uh, in government, um, whenever it has ruled, it is ruled by the licence of the Māori vote. But that Māori vote is, has never been used in the knowledge that it actually holds the balance of power within the Labour Party. That's the difference. That's the reason why I'm here in this Māori Party, is because <clears throat> um, our vote is assimilated, it's subjugated there. And, um, it, and it just can't continue. You know, we, this is this part of this liberation. And so um, you just saw this new energy arrive um, at the Marae. Um, it's it's going to be lasting. Um, it's not a flash in the pan created out of one issue called foreshore and seabed. Māori have multiple issues. Those issues are never going to go away. And as we um, uh, go through our generations, uh, our, our way of doing things uh, has to be upheld. Okay, The Parker way has failed. There's no doubt about that. Um, for years and years and years. So what? What? So 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 in the context of this, if somebody asks us as a Māori Party, or oh, uh, who will you go with, National Labour? No, no. Who have they gone with before? What have they achieved for us before? A mana Māori motahaki stance is no, no. You tell me what you're going to do for my people. Don't don't ask me uh, what I'm going to do for you. Because this is a new Māori party, this is a reinvigorated, this is a re-energised party that is very clear about um, its sense of uh, where it should compromise, if it should compromise at all. So the, the clarity, um, this liberation that we talk about, the clarity that came through from <clears throat> all the people that arrived, uh, we're, all, we're all Māori, but we're not all the same. I, I get that. Uh, if you look at, uh, and I just wanted to make this final point before I hand over to Deb, uh, if you look at the Taitoki Rewa that arrived, okay, and their team, uh, everyone that arrived with their teams, uh, they had different energy, um, different skills, but they, but, but you know, with the collaboration, the merging of a new Māori battalion uh, that's going to go into election 2020 uh, with the same uh, vim and vigour as our ancestors did in the Pioneer Battalion and Māori Battalion, uh, because they because they were organised for themselves, by themselves, to themselves, and you can't get a better battalion than one that answers solely to uh, its ancestors and its homeland. So um, the beauty about the uh, Māori Party uh, coming together um, and working out our policies and our programs is you you, you look at Māori Menor, a uh, couple kingi in the north. I, I, look, um, I've worked with her. Because I've been around a lot longer than a lot of the other candidates. <laughs> um, so I've, I've um, worked with their fathers probably and mothers but, uh, and aunties and uncles. But the point is, when you look at Maria Menor, I've worked with her for years uh, because we've been around. And um, she's just an outstanding, vibrant, um, effervescent character, isn't she? Then you go to Donna, um, you know, Pukiri Phillips, a candidate in um, Hauraki, Waikato. Another and her and, and her Fano that she brings, the outstanding young woman. Um, all 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 have children, you know, and they've got the mother touch. And then you then you move to the Waiariki with uh, Rawari, and Rawari just has lived, breathed, and eat, slept, and drank it with um, my mukupunas, the uh, Arangatiratanga. You know, they live in they live in the they live twenty four seven as Māori. Um, you know, from the day they wake up to the day they go to sleep. Whereas in the urban areas, we don't, we just don't have <clears throat> the uh, systemic around us. And then you move down to Tai Hauru with Deb, uh, an extraordinary team come up there. And, you know, <clears throat> that is one of, uh, on paper, that's got to be uh, our strongest uh, hope to get back into parliament. And so, uh, you know, we, we, we want, we um, are willing, <clears throat> willing <laughs> her on as well. I want her people to get in behind her, you know, to get in behind her. And then um, Takuta, Ferris, down there into to Tai Tonga. Outstanding. Oh, like, I've, I've just met these uh, younger fellas, right? Uh, they're, they're just incredible uh, sense of purpose. Their academic qualifications are impeccable. Their service into their communities uh, is without question, without question. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and then, then you move across to um, Ikaroa Rāwhiti with, with Heather Skipworth, another uh, iron Māori. You know, um, thousands of lives change for the better 
diabetics no longer on um, insulin. Uh, weight loss, uh, incredible. Cardiovascular problems gone. And so what a wonderful person. Um, and and then, then you, it's just it's just an incredible group of people. Oh, like, you know, um, it's uh, um, it was just an, uh, it's an awakening, you see. So this party's got a calling. There's a calling where whole Fano and whole we are moving to say, no, 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 well, <clears throat> we're, we're going to have to have a Māori movement because every other movement is run by non-Māori. And good Māori are in them, but, they, but they're assimilated and sub, subjugated like I used to be. Uh, and I, I, I get that, right? Uh, and so it's not about uh, us having to go at our brothers and sisters and other parties. It's about us affirming, no, no, about who we are and what we are. Uh, rather than where where they are assimilated and subjected to, okay, they're there. I get that because I used to be one of them, right? Mm-hmm. In the story, I thought. That's yes, right. One of them, Jason brings up a valuable point. You know, our Juano, these are our brothers and sisters in other parties, and you know, I think the question of who we're going to go with is, um, you know, is really a detractor because as Maori, we've worked with Maori across many many sectors and spectrums. Mm. And you know, I think the concern is, uh, will we lose ourselves in that? Will we work with Māori and other parties? Of mm. course we'll work with Māori. You know, will they work with us is the question mm. that, you know, but rather than, you know, get defensive, because we've got to stop our Fano playing us off, or worse, being played off by the Pākehā, who loves to see Māori fight Māori. You know, during the COVID response, there was a lot of criticism that came to our Māori MPs, but not one came to the Pākehā MPs. Our Māori MPs fronted a whole lot of stuff. And I'm like thinking, what? Don't you front Māori stuff too yet? You're a leader for all of us. So we don't want to be part of divisive politicking because Waka Papa has proven to us in the past we have to be together, but the faith and the confidence and the belief has to be that we will do right and put our whānau first because nowhere else is mm. any other party going to put Māori first. And that is what we will do, put Māori first, our way by us, for us. And, you know, I think what we have to be able to do is continue that confidence. So the same Rāwari that works with his whānau on the ground, that fronts and tries to tick-tock, uh, you know, at, on a checkpoint, is the same Rāwari going into politics. The same Debbie that will front and cross uh, the seabed mining, that will sit there and fight for her hospitals, that will sit there and put her whānau first and, and take her rangatahi off on um, development kaupapa, is the same Debbie, the same JT who fronts and champions like no one I know. You know, he talks about all of us, but he is relentless, the hardest working and kindest person. And you know, those are the people who are going into that. And I think that's what we have to assure is, you know, those are who we are. We are the same people um, and we will continue those strengths. And, you know, we will not compromise on what has to be our, you know, our focus, which is us, by us, for us. And I think that has to be the answer versus, you know, the device of politics. Oh, you know, this will, that will. Now, where did that get us? Yep. Where has that divisive behaviour of Māori pitching against Māori get us? Because all these Pākehā mainstream parties continue on. But, you know, the Māori ones continuously get kicked around and rolled around mm. by those who have only one objective, which is to continue to rule and reign us and to have us as second-rate citizens in our own country. That's got to stop. We've got to start believing in ourselves, Whāna. Sure. Actually, one of the things you said at the Wānanga Debbie, which really stuck to me, is we don't have to play this game like the Pākehās yeah. have been playing the game. Don't do it. Yeah, I even say to our whānau, don't debate on social media. If our whānau want to, if we've learned the art to, you know, not kānohi ki te kānohi and to become keyboard warriors, let it let it go. Let let people make accusations. Let people criticise. Let let our actions speak for itself. Don't just don't go down that path. We just, you know, nohe te rati kanga. No mm-hmm. he tanga. You know, be be us. Debate like us. Everyone has he tanga te tapu. Everyone mm-hmm. has mana. And yeah, that's how we should that's how we should behave. And it's easy. It's easy.
easy to slide when you've had a heck of a day and you're behind everything and it's easy to succumb to that trolling behavior but you know trolls aren't that's not a maori tikanga so you know kia tau flano just let's stay stay hardy on the kaupapa and um and we'll be we'll be great Kilda. so i think one of the key things for me that we explored at the wananga was what did we learn from our history what did we learn from basically getting booted out of parliament in 2017 you know that was one thing we were um very clear about Fano. we heard you you didn't like our relationship with national um <clears> however <throat> there are other learnings other lessons in there for us john what other learnings uh do you think we took away from that and discussed this weekend Oh, I think um, the um, Māori people up and down the country are pretty nousy and pretty clever. They've shown since 1996 that um, they're sharp enough to shift their votes. They went to New Zealand first en masse. Uh, they went back en masse in 99 to Labour. Uh, <clears throat> they were on the shift um, after Tari took the by-election in 2004. Uh, they took four seats uh, in 2008. So they were on the march. The one thing that um, that destroys us is hey, we we tanga. See, <laughs> so, so you know, um, uh, if if the Māori Party had stayed together um, all the way, uh, the trajectory was on for seven seats in twenty eleven. Okay, so uh, the rest is history. So what that tells us. Um, right, right back from the beginning of time, set up of the Kingitanga, uh, the Kotahitanga movement, the Kohimara Mara conferences, this yearning um, of, of uh, getting a political movement that um, one allows our people to gain the equality of citizenship uh, that Article Three of the Treaty promises us has not been reached. The retention of our assets in our hands under the Second Article Rangatiratanga has been dishonoured and never been applied. The first one, the Crown's right to govern is a right to custodianship, not a right to ownership. The, these are things are still broken promissory notes from government. These things are the things that make us second-class citizens in our own land. So um, we need a political movement that uh, hones in consistently and relentlessly to ensure that the people sitting across the table uh, that stole all our assets uh, understand that they have, and that's why they're rich. Uh, but to continue to keep us poor in the land of our ancestors is not on. If you recall, we had this debate at the um, at the Wananga over the fact that we're not a race-based party. Mm. We're an indigenous party. We're a tangata whenua party. Mm. We're, we're a rights-based party. You know, mm. Pacific mm. Island party is a race-based party. Chinese party is a race-based party. We can't be, by definition, this is our country. Uh, and people sitting across the table from us mm -hmm. asking us nasty little questions um, are thereby uh, the, the grace of our ancestors giving them consent to sit there. And you know what? They're still there by our consent, not, 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 by, not by taking it from us. So there's a new, um, there's a new era uh, arriving here where um, even Māori and other parties will start to uh, honour what we are saying mm. they must we cannot but do anything but that you know so so that's another a uh, little pearl of wisdom that came out of the um wananga reaffirming who we are and not being uh um you know sometimes we normalize the way we are put down and when you normalize it you then agree to it and then you surrender to it right? but sometimes it takes um you know some of your younger people to awaken you to the fact that this is just not right. Hmm. One of the things which really stuck with me, which actually it, it boils my blood to hear the term Māori elite, iwi elite, um, and that is also something which did us in in the last election. People viewed us as cultural elitists, as whatever else elitists. Debbie, can you tell us a little bit about that and, and some of our kōrero about that on the weekend? Yeah, I mean, so first of all, I think it's important to point out that there was, um, again, this reminder, this overwhelming presence of rangatahi who have been um, encouraged and uh, grown to not doubt and be unclear of their uh, themselves, of, of their wakapapa, of 
um, I guess we are, we are as Māori. And I think the elitism is really an interesting um, term because it implies that someone has mana and someone doesn't. And uh, we all have mana. We are all tapu. Everyone matters from tuakana to tena. And our life as Māori is very circular. We never quotaize or you know put ourselves in quota or fractions. Each is critical. Um, and life is um, as respected um, as our tupuna are when we're gone, e kuri e mati. Mm. So it, it's a really interesting um, play of marketing. And it's, to me, no different to McDonald's food. There's just that right amount of sugar put into takeaways kai that captures us and we get quite addicted to it and we actually start to think it's really normal. It's actually not normal for us to accept the labelling of ourselves and then to divide ourselves by mischief marketed purely for the purposes of politics. Mm. Now, that doesn't mean that we shouldn't be holding our whānau mm. who are working for us to account. One of the things I think that COVID showed is that we are very connected. How do we how do we mobilize quick? How do we do this quick? Because we're connected. Now, if you lose your connection, you will stand to be criticized. And it's just as much for those disconnected to reconnect. It's it's a, a yin yang. It's it's a it's a um uh, you know, uh, the way that we have with light and day is Māori. But we we need to start calling out, you know, we're so keen on calling out other things, but when it comes to someone abusing us and using us for marketing purposes, um, we don't call it out. So, you know, in my mind, my mokopuna are damn elite. They are the best mokopuna in the world, as are yours, JT, as will yours, Kapua. And... To assume that we are um, are not the best as our authentic selves is just another mm. abuse. So mm. I um, I think that you know we wear these labels and we apply them, um, and they haven't come from us, you know, about us. And I think you know we really need to be mindful of uh, ourselves and our waka papa and the preservation that we have. And uh, yeah, again, making sure it's no different to when we see Pākehā wanting to wear our moko, people you know, um, culturally misappropriating our arts and our tonga. The same when they dare to label us. Mm. Let's, you know, let's call that out because you know, mm. again, um, we, we, we are really hard on ourselves, Whānau. We are, are 10 times harder on ourselves and how we serve each other and who serves us than anyone else who served us, you know, hundreds of years earlier and hundreds of years later. So I think, you know, when we talk about our values of Manaki Tanga and Winonga Tanga, and that's the defence, is to de-weaponise that type of um, cheap shot about ourselves and don't allow ourselves to be labelled. So I think the party um, discussed about the importance of connect, the importance of relationships, the importance to remind ourselves that we're in this together it doesn't matter whether you're this way or that way we will always be whānau we will always have waka papa and you know we will always come back together so I think it, it was about us as the party sort of saying no that's that's not a language that we buy into that's not a culture that's not a continuation of um mm. of labeling us that we're going to normalize and we just Again, you know, like this bad behaviour that we see that uh, followed around us last year. Which, when we see that being said, we're just going to step away from it. And so you don't get to label us. Yeah, and I think right. that, that was the importance of you know de-weaponising you know cheap shop marketing. One of the things that always strikes me is it is the aspiration of our tipuna. It is why we protested. It is an intergenerational, you know, total goal of ours to give our people back our real to restore our cultural strength, to make sure that we are at the same level economically, socially, and equal partners in this country. To get there, it means some people will get there first. 
Mm. But what mm. happens then is we must not leave the others behind. I think that was a lesson for that us. Was a yeah, yeah, well, look, there's, there's, three, there's three quick issues that I'd like to take up with um, elitism. Uh, and what happens is the little Māori sitting back home there, right, sees, oh, there's a $50 billion Māori economy, you know. Uh, and then there's a big story out, um, whatever, Iwi's uh, just cut a billion-dollar deal, built a Novotel, built this, and uh, they're, sitting, uh, they're sitting out there and uh, they're in a poor rental. Uh, they're on a list trying to get a state house, and they're thinking, shucks, I'm on that register, you know, and I, I, when's payday coming for me? Well, there is there is um, uh, some credence to that moi moi a, right? We can't, we can't say it doesn't exist. What we have to do is place it in a context, all right? And so the context is um, we settled for one cent in the dollar. The, my, my own view is that um, if you look at the Labour Party, it's funded by unions, hundreds of thousands of dollars. You look at National Party, it's funded by employers, manufacturers, associations, federated farmers. You look at the Greens, Forest and Bed. They've got very strong um, groups that are in the economy that are pushing them, right? The Māori Party, though, I, I, and I have to say this, has um, they've been missing in action a bit in terms of their Māori movement. There can be only one Māori movement, and it's the Māori Party that can advance uh, Māori interests, and iwi uh, are one big part of that. So there is a live issue there. I'm sure uh, that over the next wee while, as we head into the election, that um, that box will be ticked. So let's 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 own uh, the issue, but it's a timeline. Here's why I'm in this party. Uh, it's not to beat up anymore on the iwi and the urban stuff. What it is, is is that we've taken our eye off the real ball. And the real ball is our right to equality of citizenship. And that is not delivered by 0.3% budget that gives 99.7% to non-Māori to manage Māori. And if I could just give a, a breakdown, because we've got a few people live streaming, um, <clears throat> people in the Labour Party would have it that uh, the hundreds of millions of dollars voted to health for Māori uh, actually come to us. It's not true. Uh, it goes to the Ministry of Health on our behalf. They clip the tickets at Wellington with all their thousands of bureaucrats, then goes to the three DHBs for me in Tamaki Makaurau. Those three DHBs then clip my Māori ticket. It then goes from those three DHBs to, three, to, to multiple PHOs. Those are public health organisations. They then clip my ticket. It then goes to a non-Māori GP to, that runs the business of primary health care, and they clip the ticket. Yeah. When our people walk in as a so-called patient, <clears throat> they're merely like a uh, piece of cattle that walk in, and they, they just punch a number, $49 each adult, X dollars. Uh, so we've got, a, we've got a ring on our ear. And it just and all we are is a money making machine for non Māori employing non Māori to look after Māori. Now we can no longer continue to accept that. Not just in health, it's in welfare, it's in education, and it's everywhere. We're now uh, skilled enough. Um, we're now knowing enough to um, get a fair clip of that that cake. Now here's the other issue of that. <clears throat> if we did, we wouldn't be on the bottom end of society. We wouldn't be talking about equality of citizenship. We'll be running this country again the way we did before 1840, and we're doing a pretty good job then. So I'm just saying to you that <clears throat> let's keep our, our eye on the target, and it will require uh, all our people weighing and uh, pulling their weight. Iwi, uh, urban Māori authorities, um, our associations, Māori doctors, Māori nurses, Māori wardens. Don't call yourself Māori if you're not going to support the Māori Party. You know, <laughs> call, your, call yourself the park, the park of wardens <laughs> because you're subjugating, you're surrendering yourself. And so, you know, we've got an awakening, a new awakening, okay? Um, and, and the new awakening is uh, our fair share of every annual budget coming across to our hands to be um, devolved uh, and employing our people to fix our problems, uh, not to have a whole industry of people feasting off the failure of Māori. That's right. That's right. Now, the third of Māori, the third of us that have been doing, you know, really, really poorly are the third most engaged in government machinery. 
And yeah, what our, our view is, and this is some of the things you can expect from the party, especially after the weekend and what we've been uh, discussing, is that it's, it's now time. We have to continue uh, lobbying and advocating for our own on the ground. Those hapu, those whānau, our uh, combined Māori organisations to actually have the resourcing to achieve what they would have achieved and what they showed they achieved. COVID was an intense moment under pressure to show what we achieved outside of that. So our policy setting, our thinking, our strategizing is focused purely on how we are able to capture and and heighten that and normalize it in government machinery. So we, we have some real set views. They are provocative and they will probably make the rednecks fall over with shock. Um, and that's what we intend to do, Whānau. We, uh, we do not intend to get in there and do the same old, same old. We want to radicalise, just like we did when we brought Whānau Water in. Whānau Water shook up everyone. They had never been done, a direct funding driven by a Māori, and that's the next stage. No one else has come up with anything as radical as what Whānau Water did. So some of what we want to bring through are exactly like that, but the next level up. And again, we don't expect a single redneck to like us at the end of it, but that's not who we're there to serve. Hilda. Okay, last question for you both, mm. starting with you, John. Where to from here for the party? What can our people expect to see from us? We've got 16 weeks to go. Um, all the oxygen has been taken by um, COVID. Uh, and I think we all agree <clears throat> that uh, Adern has been an um, outstanding uh, leader in crisis. I think there's no doubt. I think, I think we all have to accept that. What we don't accept, um, budget after budget, and she's, uh, this has been her third one, is the way in which Māori have been treated. Okay? And so um, it's good to be kind, but it's also nice to prove it. So <clears throat> as we head into um, the election, uh, you, you will see budget after budget is the true reflection of how kind people really are. So all I'm saying to you is, is that um, as we head into the election, um, the program and the policies that we uh, announce, um, I wouldn't call them radical, you know, um, Deb, but what I'd call them is a, a, a right to justice, a right to fairness, a right to equality of citizenship. And if that's radical, do you know how far we're back? Yeah. Do you know how far out the back of the barn we are? No, it's just a disgrace. Mm. And and but we've uh, we've dumbed ourselves down by allowing ourselves to take to say that the crumbs off the table every budget uh, are good. You know, and you get all these the fools in the Labour Party running around saying that. <laughs> oh, I shouldn't yeah. say that. But look, <clears throat> the point is, the question is wakey wakey. Yeah. Well, Marty Party's gonna wakey wakey everybody. Yeah. Help I kill to John. Debbie, what can people expect from us moving forward? Well, I think I mean JT's right, it's radical more for the next than ourselves because we have such a long way to come back from but what you can expect I know is uh, more continued honesty uh, more us uh, you know politicking our way and uh, not uh, you know the learned normalized you know normalized westernized way you can expect um, quite a uh, dynamic uh, you know campaign we uh, typical of how Maori run a lot of things you know with limited resources but amazing capacity and innovation so um, you can expect to also see a ground rising um, following um, to the movement and it'll be really good to have you on board it'll be really good to have you on board to Tautoko uh, you know we are aware of you know how many are now following and expecting to be supportive so we would love to see your Tautoko to volunteer to help with billboards to get the messaging across be part of the movement with us and and you know help your party you know get across the line and stay with us you will see amazing talent you will see you know what i saw on the weekend which was uh a hunger in the belly the fire in the belly is still there Juano, and the absolute conviction that our Juano deserve the best and we can do that but we need to be together so you will see calls for unity you will see call for action 
Um, and you will see, as JT quite wisely said, mana back in us. You will see others that that may, for whatever reason, um, left come back and endorse us. And I think, you know, again, just as importantly, you will see the kūpahitanga that got us here that will continue to mobilise us forward. So those are some of the things, Fano. Kia ora. And on that wonderfully inspiring note, I want to thank you both for your time tonight and also those of you who are watching and joining. Um, I think we covered some really important topics tonight, which we are going to need to continue talking to our whānau about moving forward. And I look forward to those conversations happening uh, every night this week. Pō marie. Pō marie, Pō marie. Pō marie.